You may not believe this, but I wasn't even planning on doing Scallywag a thon. <laughs> and then I remembered all this and said, who the heck am I kidding? Story time. So I actually discovered Scallywagathon through Kayla at Books and Lala. And backstory is I have 2,200 books on my TBR. Like it's huge. I have a lot of books that I want to read. And then there's a smaller group that is maybe only a dozen or so that I started to read in 2016 when I tried to do this the first time and then I just didn't finish them. So you've got that little subset of books. Backstory item number two. I started watching Mr. Common Spence recently and you'll figure out here really soon why that was significant. So Kayla posts her scallywag TBR and I'm kind of entertained because I'm going along with her thinking, ha 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 ha, there's no way that I could possibly do this challenge because it sounds so cool but also so complicated and I have these rereads that I'm trying to get through so I can actually post real reviews on my Goodreads and actually get through stuff that I started the first time. She hits this one particular item on the map. Number seven is a book that has red on the cover. And immediately what goes through my mind is, oh man, I can't even imagine one book that has red on it. I mean, maybe some scraps of fabric, and but that's that's not the point, right? Like to have to have red on the cover, that would have to be something that's a really broad emblem on the cover. And I don't organize my books by color or rainbow or anything like that. So there's no way in heck that I could possibly fulfill that item off of my TBR, let alone the short one. I mean, the only book I can possibly think of is, wait, wait, this was the book that my brain conjured up. I started reading this in 2016, loved it, had no problems with it. I just didn't finish it. Spencer all of a sudden talks in his vlog about how much he loves this series now. And I'm going, oh my gosh, if he doesn't even love fantasy as much as I do. What am I doing not having read this book yet? So I pull up the map for Scallywagathon and I, and I do the, the, basically the same thing Kayla did, which is if I can figure out a way to fulfill the map off of the books that I started and need to finish, then maybe we'll do this. But I'm like retrofitting everything in it, right? So I start looking at the map. And I realized that leading into number seven is literally every single one of the starting points. Like this should be easy, right? Well, three of them didn't really fit at all. I had to go with number four, a fictional world that you want to explore. I have read Chronicles of Narnia at least two full times in my life, but not recently enough that I would have updated my Goodreads. And certainly not as an adult having read a whole bunch of other fantasy to compare it against. Leaving number seven was actually the trickiest part. It's only got two options. And one of them is a book that you've seen someone else unhaul. I was specifically trying to fit a small number of books into this list. <laughs> and then the craziest thing happened. I had recently been trying to explain to somebody else what unhaul was because of the concept of haul and unhaul in booktube. And I linked to one of Kayla's recent unhauls. It was the spring cleaning tag. And I remembered my friend responding to that video saying, oh my gosh, this super popular book, how, how could she unhaul that? And I went, I don't remember which book that was, but if it was super popular and it was fantasy, then chances are good, I want to read it. And, and something in my memory was going, I, I know the book. I can't think of the book off the top of my head, but I, I feel like when I saw that book, I knew what my friend was talking about. Next is a book you bought because of the hype. American Gods. Which is one of the books that I started in 2016. Oh my gosh, I was so excited. It's huge and I'm not discounting that, but it was a book 
that I got maybe like three chapters into before. So fine, fine, done. And then the cherry on top of this whole weird effort to build a TBR was the fact that leaving C, leaving Walk the Plank, you only have one option. And that option is a book that is about someone who is not like you in some respect. <laughs> I'm a fantasy fan, okay? I would be able to pick just about any book featuring a man who is straight and it would qualify. Like, oh my gosh, that's not even fair to pick from that list. It's huge. It's it's practically half of my TBR. So I said, no, I'm, I'm going to at least try for a challenge. I'm going to try and pick someone who is not the same race or ethnicity as me. And I know I have been trying to get through Octavia Butler's works. In particular, Kindred is on the uh, Feminist Orchestra's monthly read for a later month this year. And I know Kindred isn't a part of this series, Pattern Master, but I still want to get through it. I've, I've read two out of the four novels in this collection. I griped about it in my intimidating TBR tag. So I'm just going to go back and I'm going to start again like I wanted to and I'm going to start with Pattern Master. And that is my Scallywagathon TBR, folks. Number four, Sail the Seven Seas. Number seven, Shark Bait. Letter C, Walk the Plank. And number 10, Land Lover. And if you're wondering about this, it's because I actually finished Lion the Witch in the Wardrobe this morning. I was so excited. All right, you scurvy dogs, back to work! <laughs>